Hey fam, I want you to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Roland S. Martin, and don't forget to turn on your notifications. All right, folks, uh, as you know, uh, media is a critically important issue. Representation in media is important. I'm a lifetime member of the National Association of Black Journalists, Vice President Digital. We've been kicking the butts of networks like CNN for lack of black executives in the C-suite uh, as well. And so the Congressional Black, black Caucus, they stood with us on this. Uh, well, get, folks, I got this exclusive here, this letter. Uh, the CBC sent a letter uh, to uh, Sirius XM Radio. Uh, and it was uh, dated, give me one second, we're going to pull the letter up one second. It was dated, uh, I believe, April 23rd, April 23rd. Uh, and this letter went out to James Meyer, the CEO and director of Sirius XM Holding. And a Congressional Black Caucus expressing uh, some deep concern about, again, their lack of black leadership. Guys, pull it up, please. And so uh, this is what the CBC wrote. We find your corporation's lack of diversity especially problematic, given the fact that African-Americans and Hispanics drive consumption among streaming services. According to Nielsen, 52 percent of African-Americans and 45 percent of Hispanics use streaming services for music, radio and podcasts compared to 40 percent of their white counterparts. This level of consumption leads to increased advertisement on the channels in which we listen, resulting in big business growth for streaming services at Sirius XM and companies alike. Our constituents regularly share with us their concerns that content does not reflect the priorities of our communities. Diverse leaders are needed to understand the needs of our communities. In fact, also in the same letter, the Congressional Black Caucus say this, the reality that Sirius XM doesn't have a single black executive or shareholder on its board of directors is abysmal and presents a significant risk for the success of your business and our economy. Also, uh, in the same letter, uh, they also talk about Pandora. Now, here's the deal. Sirius XM Radio, uh, they purchased Pandora, uh, creating uh, the largest uh, audio entertainment company in the world. They acquired Pandora Media for $3.5 billion. In the letter, this is what the CBC says. Pandora's diversity and inclusion report released at the end of 2018 demonstrates, demonstrates the lack of black shareholders on the board of directors and in the C-suite. In fact, not a single board member or C-suite executive is black. Sirius XM is no different and there is no evidence that the new organization will be any different. Now, in the same letter uh, the CBC uh, sent to them, uh, this is what they wrote about, uh, again, Pandora. Go to my iPad, go to my iPad, Henry, please. Uh, this is what they actually said. Uh, they said that on January 31st, 2019, our senior staff met with Pandora's chief diversity officer, uh, <laughs> Uh, Adomize Warner and Senior Director of Government uh, Relations and Policy, uh, Caitlin uh, Brousseau, to discuss the findings of the diversity and inclusion report and the Sirius XM Pandora merger. During this conversation, we asked specific questions regarding board, C-suite, and supplier diversity. Their responses highlighted that there were currently no African Americans on the board and did not provide sufficient evidence of a plan to increase that diversity. They also indicated in their responses that there was no process in place to measure supplier and vendor diversity at that time. The stats are showing an increase of employees of color in leadership roles from 20 to 22 percent and the percentage of women in leadership roles rose from 38 to 39 percent so that the status quo would not accomplish the results our constituents wish to see. The letter was signed by Karen Bass, the chair of the Congressional Black Caucus, Congresswoman Barbara Lee, CBC Diversity Task Force co-chair, and also Congressman G.K. Butterfield of North Carolina, uh, co-chair of the same CBC Diversity Task Force. Now, folks, now let me also just further unpack this. Uh, as I said, C the CBC joined us with NABJ uh, in demanding accountability from CNN for having no black executive producers, no black vice presidents, no black EPs, no black uh, 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 SVPs, no black executive vice presidents, and no black direct reports. That was about two months ago. 
To this day, there's been no improvement at all, nothing happening at CNN. This is why pressure is important. You also might remember on this show, Roland Martin Unfiltered, we had Congressman Gregory Meeks, who has put forth legislation to demand that publicly traded companies reveal their black executives, the folks who are in the C-suite. And let me go ahead and address this right now, because see, before I even pull up, comments that are on our message boards. I've already had these dumbasses on YouTube and Twitter send me these <laughs> comments. I have these idiots who go, well, uh, why are you sitting here begging a white man for a job? Why don't you go create your own? First and foremost, we are consumers. We should be demanding folks. Chelsea, go get the book out of my bag, please. My backpack, since you're sitting right there. Go ahead and get it for me <laughs> so I can walk black folks who are watching through who don't have any understanding of actual history at all. The reason you demand this, because the reality is black people cannot create every single institution in the doggone country and assume that black people are going to be the only folks supporting that, okay? Let me be real clear. So if you one of those folks who say, start your own black law firm, start your own black this, start your own black that, no. We should be also hired in those positions, in those companies as well. It's called reciprocity. That's what we've always done. And so we should have people like the CBC and NABJ and other groups demanding those very things. And so if any of y'all stop that mess with me about we need to start our own, black folks supporting our own, I'll ask you. We got a black-owned media show here. There's no other show like this here. Are you writing a check? Are you part of our fan club? If not, you one of those folks who all you doing is running your damn mouth and doing nothing. So that's why I'm calling you out. And so the CBC challenging Sirius XM is critically important. Now, for the black folks out there, again, who are watching, who know nothing about our history, y'all run around here saying Reverend Jesse Jackson ain't nothing and the Civil Rights Movement didn't do nothing. Here's a book that I had to author on News One Now that I'm going to go ahead and uh, hold up for you. This is the book right here. If y'all could zoom in, I appreciate that. The book is called Operation Breadbasket, an untold story of civil rights in Chicago, 1966 to 1971, by Martin L. Depp. Martin is a white pastor in Chicago who was a part of the coalition that actually went out and demanded equity from various companies in Chicago. This is the book right here, Operation Breadbasket, okay? So let me walk you through what Operation Breadbasket did. First of all, the idea came from Reverend Leon Sullivan in Philadelphia. Dr. King heard about how he was utilizing pastors, putting pressure on companies to hire African Americans. Dr. King asked Reverend Sullivan to come present the idea to the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. Once he did, Dr. King said, I love it. SCLC is going to adopt it. And they called it Operation Breadbasket because the first companies they went after were bread companies. And so, Reverend Jesse Jackson uh, uh, S Sr. was in Chicago. Uh, Dr. King put him over Operation Breadbasket in Chicago. So what did they do? They targeted companies, dairy producers. They targeted soft drink companies. And what they did was they examined all of their numbers, their black employment numbers, supplier diversity numbers, and demanding equity. Now, it was based on six points in terms of how the campaign uh, actually proceeded. It was called a don't buy campaign. So number one was called information gathering. That was number one. Number two was called committee evaluation. Number three, negotiation and edu education. Number four, economic withdrawal. Number five, agreement covenant. Number six, monitoring. And what you'll discover is that, and he lays out in here, that as a result, by targeting these companies, demanding they hire African Americans, uh, after the first round, there was some $1.5 to $2 million in economic uh, capital that was generated for African Americans who were hired by these companies. Now. They didn't just sign the covenants. They said one of the mistakes that they made was that they were not following, uh, properly following up to make sure they hired all the different people. Now, they shifted also from just demanding jobs to going after supermarkets to put black goods on the store shelves. And so if Clio or Eugene or Alexis, if they own a black business, they couldn't get their products on the store shelves. And so Reverend Jackson began to meet with these folks uh, at uh, uh, University of Chicago, uh, actually Chicago Theological Seminary, and then they 14 initial black businesses. They went after the supermarkets, forced them to put black products 
on those shelves. That's how they created uh, those black millionaires. And so what Reverend Jackson has been doing with uh, capital companies like Aero Capital Management, uh, bondholders and others is opening those doors to African-Americans. Now, again, for that idiot who is sitting here commenting right now who say it doesn't matter, let me explain to you how big of a deal this is. If Cleo or Eugene or Alexis is sitting here, can do one of these jobs, they all of a sudden go on the board of directors. That means stock options. That means they get paid for it. If they get hired one of these C-suite jobs, that means now they get stock options, higher salaries as a result of that. So versus African Americans only being relegated to these small, lower level positions, let's say you're getting paid sixty, seventy, eighty thousand dollars, you're now competing for those jobs that are paying two, three, four, five hundred thousand dollars or even more. Which now means that if one if, if, if let's say if it's let's say it was uh, uh, Cleo's cousin who's a graduate of Morehouse or graduate of Florida AM, and he now all of a sudden has a job at Sirius making five hundred thousand dollars, guess what? He is now in a better position to actually cut a check to Morehouse of Florida AM. He's in a better position to cut a check to the NAACP or the Urban League or some other institutions. And so when we start talking about forcing these companies to respect black folks and hire black folks for these jobs, we're talking about creating economic opportunities for African Americans, also for their families, creating and building wealth, and also for black institutions. And so what we should stop doing is trashing folks like the CBC, I don't know what y'all doing, but by, de by, by saying, how are they demanding companies come to the table? It's the exact same thing that we're doing with CNN, <coughs> with ABC News, with NBC, and all these companies in NABJ, because we understand that we are a part of this country as well, and we cannot be frozen out of economic opportunities. This is an economic conversation. This is not just about, oh, can you just hire one or two? The fact of the matter is, we're being frozen out of these opportunities. White folks are being passed these opportunities left and right, and that's why when you see Hollywood, Go to Deadline.com. Every time you turn around and somebody's getting hired as a studio chief or this person is always somebody white because we don't get those jobs. Those are jobs they can do to those 60, 70, 80 years old. The jobs that we get, oh, so-and-so got hired for a role. No, we should be supporting our institutions, demanding accountability for our folks when it comes to these type of jobs. And so I certainly appreciate uh, what the CBC is doing by pressing Sirius XM radio. And so we need to learn and utilize what was done before. What Operation Breadbasket did, created a lineage of black millionaires in Chicago, in Atlanta, and across the country because they used the economic buying power of African Americans to force these companies to change. In fact, uh, there was one company, I, I'm a, uh, this is what this CEO said, uh, I would rather have you pick at us now because we didn't promise enough than to pick at us a year from now because we didn't do what we promised. There are other CEOs who said they were scared because if black folks stopped pulling their uh, dollars, stop shopping there, they also would stop making money. <laughs> Serious, don't want black folks to cut off Sirius XM radio. So the CBC is doing what is right. Cleo, I wanna go with you. I love it how we keep acting as if stuff that's old can't be used today. This is called the CBC, Democrats taking control of the House, now having power. As Maxine Waters said at the NAACP, I have the gavel and I'm not afraid to use it. They are saying to these publicly traded companies, you are going to pay attention to black people or we are going to call you out and use our power to bring you to the table. Well, one of the reasons there's this generation gap between what we have accomplished in the past during the civil rights movement, et cetera, and the ignorance of the day is that as you and I've talked about before, we don't talk about our history. We don't actively pass down black history as a rites of passage. So a lot of young people, and I engage them all the time, have no clue about their history, and they look at somebody like Jesse Jackson as a distant dinosaur because they have no clue. People like you help to inform them. But I'm fascinated by what the, C what, what, what the CBC is doing with SiriusXM because this is serious territory, Roland. This is the media. 
the media... The last bastion. Exactly. I wrote about this being the last bastion years ago. This is the final frontier because the media is, controls our psyche. It controls our worldview. Unfortunately, it, can serve, it, it also controls the black self-concept. I talk all the time about the fact that there's no such thing consistently, reliably, as an independent black-on-black -black love story in popular culture media. Right. And this is not... And these are not accidents. For example, there's no such thing as a black person who can greenlight the popular film nope, in Hollywood. Not one. No such An thing. African American has never That's right. run a Hollywood studio in his history. You've had a black man run American Express, a black right. woman run Xerox, right. a black man who is the chairman <laughs> of the board of Microsoft but has never but run a Hollywood different. studio. See, the point I want to make before you go to the next person is that that's different. See, those are not media iconic phenomena. The media itself is very important in terms of how the brainwashing occurs. And let me also add this here. No African American has ever run a news network. Not An African American has never run NBC, ABC, CBS, MSNBC, CNN, Fox News Channel. Not one. And while white people are grappling to, cl to clean the power right now, it's going to be interesting to see what NABJ and you guys accomplish regarding confronting them. You said you haven't heard from them in two months. Oh, no, no. But not... well, they still, they still, in a, CNN is still tripping because they're like, we're not going to talk to NABJ oh, I know. because of Rolling. Because of Rolling. Uh, but guess That's what? That's an excuse. But, but, but here's the piece, though. I, we have elections in May. I'm running unopposed. <laughs> I ain't going nowhere for two years. I'm just saying. <laughs> Uh, I want to pull in Eugene and Alexis here. Alexis, this is important because, again, for black people, this is not about Lauren Coates having a show on a Sirius XM or Joe Madison or Cameron Hunter or Mark Thompson, even though he was pulled off the air and they're still back and forth whether he's going to come back or not. This is not about black hopes. This is about black power on the executive side, and that's why the CBC is challenging Sirius XM. Yeah, so I think that, so the first thing I want to say is that you're talking about there not being any black exe executives on different levels of executives. So we're talking about VPs, SVPs, like different tiers of executives. And so for me, the first thing I want to say is if this was a conversation about there not being, let's say, for example, just any black VP, like just one tier, then we can run with the argument, okay, maybe it's a coincidence or maybe... Um, you know, it just just so happened to be like that, you know, because no. we also don't want to start getting token black people either. But we're talking about there's different tiers to the executives and there's not a single black person in any of these tiers. Then it becomes suspicious. Then it becomes you couldn't find one black person. You couldn't find multiple black people to be in these positions. And that means no and black pipeline. Like that, doesn't need to be had. that means no pipeline. So which means that if you don't get the lower level executive job, hell, you'll never be CEO. Because you're not even in the pipeline. Right. right. You do have to be in the pipeline. And I, and I feel like, again, my whole point is that, again, if a, if a particular job is not fulfilled by a black person and if a, a white person or somebody of a different race was just so happened to be more qualified, then I can understand that. But again, for there to be all these different jobs and not, you know, black people in any of them, then that does raise eyebrows to say, OK, what is really going on here? And I think what has to happen is that the CBC does have to, you know, press this issue. And simultaneously, we have to just continue to encourage um, people, people to call right. out. Uh, entities like Sirius uh, XM and also continue to encourage people to go for these types of positions because like you said with no one being in these no people of color being in these positions that is very um, discouraging but I feel like if we simultaneously call out these entities while still encouraging black people to go for these positions right. then some real change can happen. Eugene 7.01 p.m. this dude think B is on YouTube with all respect why must we continue to ask for inclusion into this country's inner workings maybe a new movement to build our our own with us in the driver's seat is a better approach for 2019. Hey, think biz. Has have your ass cut a check? Have you even given five dollars <laughs> to Roland Martin unfiltered? See, th 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 see, this is what kills me, Eugene. <laughs> this notion that somehow, well, no, let's not even do that. Hell no. We built it, we want it, and we're gonna demand it. Yeah. And again, black folks use our economic power to say, if you don't give it to us, you're not gonna get paid. So the thing is this, Roland, what makes this more damning in 2019 than what it was when uh, Operation Breadbasket was being implemented is this. The number one product of Pandora and every other streaming service is hip-hop music and hip-hop adjacent music. 
uh, hip hop streams, uh, you know, sometimes five to ten times better than pop and rock and country, which a lot of times in the case of Taylor Swift isn't even available on streaming services. Um, and so, you know, the thing is this. It's not, you know, we're, we're, we're asking for equity and a seat at the table because you're taking our product and you're making billions off yep. of it. Um, yeah, it, it's, it. It's something that's, that's being discussed across the hip-hop community all, all over because it's like, hey, what's the true value of a stream? You know, you're paying, you know, pennies on a dollar, you know, literally half a cent per stream, but you're raking in billions in advertising. And the merger with XM Sirius and what they're trying to do with the, the accessibility of the Pandora side and accessibility of the XM Sirius radio side is absolutely crazy. Uh, and there, there's literally no argument they can make when they're paying somebody like a Howard Stern, who is literally a dinosaur, who's losing appeal day in, day out, $100 million a year, um, and, 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 and have very few limited uh, options for, for black content. And I just, it's absolutely demonstrable. And, and, and let me just say this real quick, because again, I, I mean, I, 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 it kills me for these people who don't know a damn thing about history. Uh, Vision Board Promotions on YouTube, I'm going to call you out. I've yet to see or hear about a low-level <laughs> black employee rising to a VP or CEO in corporate America. Maybe there's one somewhere out there. Yeah, Vision Board, uh, uh, Vision Board Promotions. You ever heard of Don Thompson? Started as a worker at McDonald's, became the first black CEO of McDonald's worldwide. Yes, Don Thompson. Look him up. D-O-N, T-H-O-M-P-S-O-N. How about Ursula Burns, who was the assistant to the CEO at Xerox? Guess what? She later became the CEO of Xerox. So the reality is there are black folks. The point is, if we are not in the pipeline, we will never be CEO and in control of those dollars. And so we'll continue to cover this story with the CBC holding uh, them accountable. You want to support Roller Martin Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to rollermartinunfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RollerMartinUnfiltered.com.